Hi, my name is Carmel Rohani and I'm an intern here at the BIC as well as one of our delegates to the Commission on Population and Development or CPD. I'm sitting here with another one of our delegates, Jeff Cameron, and as somebody who knows a lot more about migration than I do, we thought it would be great to sit him down and have a bit of a conversation about the topic. We're going to be splitting this up into three videos. The first will be about why it's important to address migration, as well as dispelling some common myths or misconceptions surrounding the issue. The second one is going to be talking about how migration can contribute to development, and then some new trends that are emerging within migration patterns. And the last one will be framing migration from a new forward-thinking perspective. So with that said, Jeff, it's so nice to have you here. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Uh, what can you tell us about why it's important to discuss migration? Well, I think there are many reasons it's important to talk about migration, but I'll just talk about maybe, I'll introduce three reasons um, that migration has become especially important and relevant to discussions around global policy, the reason why it's on the CPD agenda this year. The first is that migration is really one of the major forces uh, shaping humanity's social, economic, and political life now. I mean, that's been true throughout human history. Um, but as we've heard at CPD, today more than there are more migrants than ever before in human history. So there are now more than 200 million migrants around the world, international migrants, which is about 3% of the world's population. And many more than that would like to move across borders. So there's a tremendous and growing amount of migration pressure. If we look at what's driven migration in the past, whether it be demography or social networks or inequalities between countries, many of these factors are expected to grow much more uh, much greater in the in the 21st century. And so there's every expectation that the movement of people across borders will accelerate over the course of the century, generate new challenges for governments that will only really be solved through international cooperation and dialogue. So that's one of the reasons it's important to talk about migration. Another one is really something we'll be talking about more in the second video, but it's really the, 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 possi the potential of migration to make a significant contribution to addressing global poverty and inequality. There are many global institutions now that are looking at migration, um, both from a financial aspect, from a, f from a social perspective, um, and see, see the movement of people to pursue opportunity, whether it be education or employment, uh, as really a way to relieve uh, and address global inequalities between countries. So that's the second reason it's important to talk about migration. A third is, is a much kind of bigger question, um, and it's really migration uh, really brings into focus certain essential questions about how we, how we think about diversity in our societies, how we, how we accommodate diversity, um, how we become conscious of our fundamental oneness uh, in really practical ways. So a question that often arises in conversations about migration is how we balance the concerns of those who wish to expand freedom of movement, increase the choice of individuals uh, with others who really value the strength of community bonds and social cohesion. Um, and, and also those who are mindful of the responsibility of institutions to care for those who fall within their uh, jurisdictions. And so migration really brings into focus a lot of, you know, really fundamental questions about how the individual community and institutions relate to each other in a society that is increasingly diverse uh, and that is, uh, that, that in which people are increasingly mobile. You mentioned in your first point that we're going to be seeing an increase in migration, most probably. And something you and I both heard in the opening session of the commission was how people often have very strong emotional responses to migration. What are some myths um, that you can maybe dispel that would be causing these responses? Well, I think there are many misconceptions about migration. Uh, and some of these misconceptions uh, are national specific. So depending from country to country, there might be different views of migration. but. Um, but if we look in general at a macro level, um, you know, I can talk about three specific uh, misconceptions about migration. The first is that there's a view that the existence of a world defined by nation states, national boundaries and borders necessarily means a world in which there have to be high obstacles to human movement. And we may accept this as a normal condition of the world today, but in fact about a century ago in the 19th century, there's an extended period of time where many states consciously dis dismantled borders, or not borders, but barriers to human movement, where passports really became essentially irrelevant. This is true uh, in many parts of Europe, in the Americas, even in, even in parts of Asia, this is true. Um, so really, if we talk about living in an age of globalization and global integration, um, 
know, that we're living in a, in a second or third wave of globalization today. The first wave was during the 19th century, a time when uh, many states allowed people to move freely across borders. And so the natural uh, state of affairs uh, in a world defined by nation states is not necessarily one where there have to be high, high barriers to human movement. The second common misperception about migration is that poverty, uh, particularly extreme poverty, is a cause of migration. Um, mig migrants themselves are often, most people don't want to migrate, despite their difficult circumstances uh, for whatever reason. Uh, the people who are willing to move and to seek opportunity uh, in another country or across a border are often those who are, um, who are, who are uh, inclined to take risks, um, who are, you know, adventurous by, by their by their nature. Um, this is not to sort of do it, make a gross characterization of migrants, but on the whole, migrants tend to be exceptional people. Um, that being said, what we know about the drivers of migration tend to be uh, do tend to be to a certain extent income disparities. But those who are often able to move uh, are those with uh, a certain degree of resources, with a certain level of education, with social networks abroad. Uh, so migrants themselves are often from the middle income of their country and often come more from middle income countries than the poorest countries in the world. And so many people have this perception that lowering uh, barriers to migration will lead to a flood of poor people across borders. And that's really, that's a fear that's based sometimes on kind of a prejudice perpetuated by media or a, a xenophobia um, that should be addressed much more directly. The third um, misperception about migration is that when people move to a country, they're a net, they're a net cost to, the, to, those, to those countries and to those societies. In fact, there have been many studies done that have shown, uh, just to connect to the point I made earlier, that mig migrants are often a source of innovation for the countries they move to. They often make contributions socially, culturally. They're net contributors to uh, state finances. Um, there are sometimes misperceptions that migrants depress wages. Uh, the economics literature has really debunked that myth. So in fact, most researchers on the subject now agree that migrants themselves may make net contributions to the societies they move to. Well, thank you so much. Having lived somewhere like South Africa that's really plagued by xenophobia, I think I can definitely agree with you that it's important to know what's right and what's wrong when you're talking about migration. For those of you interested in following the rest of this conversation, our next video is going to be talking about contributions that migration can make to development as well as some new trends that are emerging.